Next on the list, we have this really funny story from the BBC. Again, it said, COVID quarantine breakers. It was selfish, but I don't regret it. And this is a story, or this is something that I touched upon on maybe another po- episode of the podcast where I essentially said, I think now, they, I think now because of obviously the increased restrictions across Europe, I think for the most part in some places in the world, <coughs> it seems like the COVID-19 restrictions have increased somewhat. Um, governments all over the place are essentially uh, telling people that, you know, your essentially your Christmas is over. Um, this, this year is completely a wrap. Um, whatever holiday you had previously, you can't then go take again now because you'll have to quarantine for 14 days. So it did make me think that all those people who are basically sh- publicly shamed at the beginning of March, April, maybe say June, July also, um, how now looking back on it saying, see, I told you so, it was probably the best time to go. If you hadn't, if you didn't go on holiday, if you didn't even just go for a break, a little weekend thing to Ibiza, to Greece, if you're in Europe, um, to Tulum, if you're in America or other other places, right? Um, you probably missed your chance now just because of the restriction, just because of how the surge in cases is going up. And unfortunately, it was one of those occasions where you had to be selfish because you weren't, you weren't going to get any direction from the government and which either way right whether to go or whether to stay right they weren't gonna you know risk giving that kind of advice have loads of people go and the cases go up and then be blamed for it like i said this whole thing is a blame game no one is no one is basically no one is um dealing with this in a way of like through the prism of oh let's preserve life they're dealing with it into to make basically saying oh let's ensure we don't get blamed when this is over right no one wants to go to the human human rights tribunal at the end of this no one wants to go to the war crimes of virology at the end of this no one wants that so um i definitely understand why some people are like you know what i'm gonna flout the rules i'm gonna go on my holiday because if not and if i stand around waiting for the government to decide when and when i can't do things uh, the next time you'll go on a trip will be flipping 2022 like for real from the uh, that'll be the only time the government are going to really encourage people to start to- start going on holiday tourism departments are going to start putting out their propaganda and marketing i say 2022 until then everyone's going to kind of play it safe so this title from the bbc says the following covid quarantine breakers it was selfish but i don't regret it um should we play a bit of the video or should we read the article but let's read the article uh she says um across the uk normally um law-abiding people are harboring a guilty secret they are covid holiday quarantine breakers they travel to holiday spots where the breaches were drenched where the beaches were drenched in sun and where coronavirus infections were starting to surge when they came home they didn't shut themselves away for a fortnight. Instead, they broke the law. We don't know how many people have been ignoring the self-isolation law after coming back from COVID-19 hotspots, but rates of infection from people who have recently travelled overseas have been rising, says the Office of Health of National Statistics. But it's clear, anecdotally at least, that lots of people have avoided being caught, which is obviously true. I think everyone I've spoken to has travelled, especially when they've left the UK. They've had little to no sort of like procedure about clocking whether or not whether and when you went so i don't know sorry the airlines do they get you to fill in a form specifically blah blah before you leave but when you come back there's no sort of um uh reminder to stay at home for 14 days you just basically get you can basically you arrive when you arrive you leave the airport and no one knows whether or not you're going to go straight to a brothel or back to your home there is no kind of like checking up on that regard so there's no surprise that this is happening in this way. Again, would we as a nation be comfortable with um, some random person calling our mobile the second day we arrive or we're at home, um, checking up and making sure that we're at home, checking our geotag and all that sort of stuff? Probably not. But in terms of dealing with this virus uh, in the best way possible, you probably need to be a little bit draconian, a little bit 1984-ish in order to kind of get it under some control. But unfortunately, because we've been so um, hands off or the government has, Boris and his gang have been so hands off with this stuff and have kind of espouse the idea of british common sense it's no surprise that this is happening right so unless the laws are tight and strict and well defined people will flout the rules it is what it is in july alice a 20 something worker um, um, from surrey was fed up with not having to go on holiday uh, for the good of her own mental well-being she says she booked the rules sitting in her garden she confessed her crime to me <laughs> she says she booked a trip to mallorca with a friend then days before she had been due to fly out the uk slapped quarantine rules on spain which is of course at the time was annoying but I didn't really get the outrage in that regard because things are going to change. We're living in a, we're living with a virus that's essentially, you know, killed huge swaths of the population, right? So it's things that will change on the, you know, sometimes on a dime. It is what it is. Um, I understand it's frustrating, but it's not that big of a deal. And to be honest, I would imagine if you do go on holiday, there is, there has to be a part of you that has to, 
there has to be a part of your brain that's like you know what there might be a possibility here where if i come back the you know the the, the quarantine regulations might have changed or you should just have it in the back of your head that you're going to be in your home for 14 days regardless anyway it shouldn't be like a thing of like i'm going to go on a holiday and just continue to live my life you should have it in your head and again i think under these times you can possibly um negotiate something with your employer to be like hey i'm going to go away most likely to not if i do go away and come back things might change um is it okay if i work from home for like the next 14 days just in case that does happen they could be okay yes or no right but i'm sure some people are like you know what if i do say that i won't go on holiday i get it but hey don't be surprised it continues here it says we were basically told by the holiday company that we did, we couldn't get our money back i didn't want to lose any other holiday and my money so i just decided to go anyway okay that's your, that's your risk when alice got to mallorca she decided the self-isolation she'd face on return would be no nonsense the hotel was largely empty and re reassuringly clean again that's not the point of it there wasn't really a time other than where we were eating on a sunbed or in a hotel room that we weren't wearing a mask it just felt really safe alice believed that the virus transmission rate was very low she was probably safe in mallorca in england she thought in fact the coronavirus infection in mallorca had been climbing rapidly during her stay or duh and meaning her risk of catching it had been growing day by day i love these holiday this is the thing that's really imp that's really amazing to some of these for me um these holiday these holiday girls or people that do break these rules they seem to be like um they seem to be completely unaware of like the climate. Like I would imagine if you're breaking rules, you kind of have an understanding what the climate is and you're like saying, and you're basically making a decision. Like, I don't care what it is. I know what, the, I know what the situation is, but I'm going to break them anyway. Right. But what you end up have, what ends up happening when you dig deep a little bit with these stories is that you end up finding people who break the rules and then try and, uh, reverse rationalize, reverse engineer why they went right and try and kind of give you a bit of a uh you know what's the thing called um uh, a backseat quarterback sort of like looking at it like oh, okay look here's what i would here's here's why i did what i did and trying to r rationalize something that you did in in the moment because you were just bored and you didn't want to be at home anymore that's okay you're allowed to say that right and that's that's what i'm saying you're allowed to make any decision that you want because i think we've got there's no need to, there's no, yeah, that's my point here. There's no need to shame anybody anymore. I think we're at a stage now where this virus is going to be with us until the vaccine is here, right? We've all kind of come to that realization. Um, if that is the case, people are going to have to do what they have to do, whether it's going to have to go on road and tour, whether it's going to have to go and DJ some, some places, whether they're going to have to open up their business, start up a business, go and work in the store, whatever. People have to do what they have to do. It is what it is. Let people get on with their lives. But they have to do so in the knowledge that you are putting x y and z person in jeopardy you are jeopardizing your health these things have to be accepted accepted too now it doesn't mean you're going to stop your living your life but you have to know that those things do exist and they are going to be there no matter what decision you take so it's really funny to see people like her like you know saying oh kind of um you know pretending to be a virologist and you know knowing all the science and then essentially being completely proven wrong but hey she says it continues um so what happened when she returned she said while her job allowed her to work from home again privilege of that what absolute piece of shit she wondered about the rest of her life so what 14 days is the rest of your life you absolute bimbo just so she begins um hesitantly i isolated for a couple of days and then i just thought you know what i'm fine it's like god almighty man we have got like there are legit some there there are legit some like i wouldn't say r worded but there 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 are legit dum dums in the world like just dum dums who are like there's nothing you can do right if they get run over by a car it's probably the best thing for them and their family right that they're not around anymore like they're just gonna put everybody in jeopardy imagine you only have to be at home for two weeks 14 days isn't even that long of a time right it goes by in a blip especially during covid time is just time the time is just a construct during covid right um time is in your imagination uh time is what you make it in during covid times right we're in flipping october already right this isn't real so to think that you can't do 14 days being at home is just nuts it's nuts um in that fortnight um that followed the critical period of potential transmission alice visited family although not elderly relatives went on a shopping trips and met up with her friends in their homes or local park she is a absolute goon she says i just thought if i'm gonna catch it anyway it'll be in england people aren't following all the rules in here all the time oh my god so she's like you know what as long as i don't catch it on holiday in mallorca i'll be fine if i catch it at home then at least i'll go in hospital it's like 
it's, yeah, it doesn't even anyway continue and you are and you are uh, and you were one of them should i point out she says yeah she replies nervously how lucky and unlike her you are to stay at home duh, duh. um she's not alone research organized by the bbc last weekend suggests a hardcore minority of people were not prepared to obey the rules or staying at home if the law required while four percent of people polled by ipso mori said they were very unlikely or certain not to isolate if they tested positive <laughs> they rose to 80 percent asked what they could do they just told track and trace to itself isolate because they would be in close to contact with somebody who had tested positive they refuse um they refuse things across the ages climbed by eight percent on travel one in ten said they wouldn't self-isolate after returning from a hot spot rising to 16 percent from under eight thirty fours. meanwhile a fifth of people said it was unacceptable sorry it was acceptable to break the law to go to work and a quarter said they would ignore the first travel quarantine and again, yeah it's acceptable to go to work if you've got dickhead employers or people that aren't going to be nice to you right I get it. But most employers are going to go, are going to be like, if ever there was a way, if ever there was a time to like pretend that you have some level of humanity, to pretend you have a heart, you have a soul, it's during COVID, right? You probably get, there's probably some rare occasions in your office life where you get to be, you get to have a really human conversation with your employers, right? Our managers. When somebody in your family dies, you have a family emergency, you get married, someone's pregnant, or there's a global pandemic, right? Or some sort of terrorism attack, right? Or some sort of natural disaster. Those are the only times you get to have a little bit of a human conversation. And we're generally all going through this, right? Genuinely, we're going through a mad issue. It's not like one of those things where, like, oh no, I couldn't get to work on time because it was raining in my area. No, it's fucked everywhere, right? So this is the one time where you actually get to like um, have an honest, humane conversation with your employer. Now, most people would agree to let you quarantine at home some places won't if they won't cool break the law but to suggest that it's okay to go to shops and to go to hang out with people just because you feel like you're over it is insane and this definitely explains why there's such a you know a prevalence of like sexually transmitted infections right stis stds wherever you call them wherever you are because we have these great inventions like you know condoms and you know um other instruments that you can use to prevent people from spreading diseases right um whoever your partner's using they can use some things that can prevent some things but in general most people don't care and it's just like you know what throw it out the window let's go raw and enjoy ourselves and then they're surprised when they catch something and then when they do catch something they don't inform the person they were prior they carry on going on but about their life infecting a whole slew of people right men women dogs and cats wherever they're wherever they're touching and then you know and then we're wondering why rates of flipping sexual transmission infections are up like people are nuts man again this this has shown it covid has shown it people are legit insane and again, it's not even that deep of a thing. Imagine if, imagine you have to, imagine if, if you went somewhere and you had to quarantine for like a month, how people would be. It's 14 days, which is nothing in quarantine times. Nothing. If you do two days, if you do two days, you can easily do a week. If you do a week, you can do another week. It's not that much time. It goes by in a blip. It goes by in a blip. And again, shouldn't it be, it should just be part of your thinking when you book a holiday. Like, okay, cool. I might possibly have to quarantine for 14 days. Just be, should be in your head. No big deal. Before you leave, you get your shopping done, you stock up on some baked beans, you get your flipping liquids in, whatever you need to do to limit the amount of time you spend outdoors. You just do some common sense stuff. So then when you go on holiday, you can enjoy yourself. You can be free. Have a good time. Ba 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 ba. Praise to the most high. Heart party. Have, do your own thing. And then when you come back home, you're prepared and ready to go. But to have this idea that you're suddenly going to, you know, you can go abroad, you can hang out, like nothing's going on. Like, no, there's something going on, my dear. Look out your window. No one's on the streets. People are dying, right? People have lost their grandmothers and haven't necessarily had the chance to bury them. Like, this is a serious thing, but hey, what do I know, man? What do I know?